so far, we've only been searching for single instances of very simple patterns. We're going to stick with the simple patterns for now, that is, fixed substrings rather than more flexible patterns. But we're going to look for more than one instance at a time. Now, the way we're going to do that is to use another modifier, and this is the G modifier. Let's take a look at this code snippet and see what it's trying to do. The first line sets up the default variable, dollar underscore, with a string value. And that string tells us what we're trying to do. We're looking for the letter S within the default variable. Now, if we look at the second line, it's quite different from the way in which we've used regular expressions in the last couple of movies. First of all, we're setting up an array here, and we're giving it the name matches. And we're setting the values of the array to the results from this regular expression here. Now, the first letter here is simply the matches function. And then we have two slashes surrounding the letter S. And the letter S, in this case, is not any kind of modifier. It's simply what we're searching for. Our pattern is just one character. And the last element here within that regular expression is the G modifier. And G, in this case, stands for global. So we're searching globally for all instances of the letter S. Globally, in this case, means globally within the string that we've asked the regular expression to search through which, because we haven't specified a particular spring, will be the default variable. The matches array, after we've carried out these two commands, will contain two things, and they're both lowercase s's. There's obviously something missing here, however. What about the uppercase s at the end of the string? It's not picking it up because as we mentioned in the last movie, regular expressions are case sensitive until we tell them not to be. We can get round this once again by using the I modifier for case insensitivity. Now this doesn't conflict in any way with the G modifier. All we need to do is use them both. And once we've used both of those modifiers, then we're able to say, search both globally and without worrying about case sensitivity. So now the matches array contains two lowercase s's and an uppercase one. Let's move quickly over to our text editor and show a quick example of that. Now, I'm deliberately using strange capitalization here. And we're going to do the same, essentially, as what we did in the example we've just seen. What we're using here is a for each loop to loop over the elements of the matches array. And we're going to print each of them out. Now, the print statement here is actually printing the default variable. Don't be confused by the fact that in the first line, we set up the default variable with a certain value. Every time we use the for each loop, or certain other language constructs we're going to find out about later, the default variable is set to a new value. So in effect, we could either say print without feeding in a value, or we could say print and specify the default variable. And that's what we're going to do in this case, because we need to also include a new line. And we can actually run those together and put them inside the double quotes. Now we can see that our matches array contains each of the matches that it's found for the pattern within the larger string. You'll notice that it's retained the case of each of the patterns that it's found. That is to say, 
although the search was case insensitive, we don't lose any of that data. So the values that it pulls out, it preserves in full, even though the search itself was case insensitive.